Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today we're going to have a look at the entries for the last group build on my Discord server. Apologies for this taking so long. I've been a little bit busy making a bunch of videos, and it took a while for Top Bunk to get these images to me in the first place, which is okay. And as always, a big thank you goes to him for doing this. The video is here now, and that's what matters. This video will share the entries from the Cold War group build, which covers the time from the end of the Second World War to the beginning of the 90s, so there should be a wide range of models. We do have another group build currently running, but I'll talk about that at the end of the video. Let's have a look at the pictures. First up we have Hope for the Best with his SPW50K Battery Bebo Bach Thung Stell. I have no idea how to read or say that. It's an observation vehicle from East Germany. It looks to me like it could be amphibious to some degree too. Bear in mind I don't know a whole lot about Cold War vehicles, particularly later Cold War, so my identification skills aren't so great. Good thing Top Bunk has provided some info. This model is in 15mm scale from Battlefront, and it looks pretty good. Very nicely and neatly painted. Roger Weston shared this Vietnam era M48A3 pattern tank. Roger based this model on the same tank that gave his father, who was a pilot, lifts between bases during the Vietnam War. Personally, I can't think of a better lift to be given than a tank ride. The model is by Tamiya in 135th scale. I quite like the angry face on the front of the hull and the commander raising the gun in the air, presumably in victory. Very cool. Roger also entered this A-10 Warthog medium jet bomber. Warthogs are sort of ugly, which is probably part of the reason they're called that, but they also look quite interesting. This one is a Ravel kit in 148th scale. Nice work. Weasel has entered this Typhoon class submarine. Apparently the red star on the conning tower wasn't actually there on the real Typhoons, but this one was inspired by the hunt for Red October. I think the star looks quite good there. We don't really see a lot of submarines on this Discord, so this was a pretty cool entry to see. The model is in 1700th scale by Hobby Boss, and Weasel has painted it very nicely. Spacefan247 has submitted a whole load of entries, so hold on to your butts. First is this F-84G jet fighter from the Korean War. I really like the silvery metal on this, it's quite nicely done. The model is a Ravel 148th scale kit. Next up, an M60A3 pattern tank. This tiny little tank is very cute. It's in 1 285th scale and is apparently 3D printed. I quite like it. Then we have this M551, or is it M551? I don't know. It's a Sheridan. Sheridans are also tiny and cute. The decals on this look a bit yellowed, but otherwise it looks pretty decent. It's an airfix kit in 176 scale. And then we have this M50 Ontos, or Ontos, Ontos, Tank Destroyer. This thing is pretty much six recoilless rifles on tracks. Pretty interesting looking if you ask me. The model is in 132nd scale by Ravel. And now some ships. This is the battleship USS New Jersey from the 1982 600 ship navy program. This was led by Ronald Reagan and essentially involved the modernization of hundreds of old ships, including some World War II era ships in order to measure up to the Soviet fleet. The model looks pretty cool, and it's a Tamiya 1700th scale model. Spacefan's sixth and final entry is this destroyer, the USS Kassin Young from the Korean War. It's very destroyery. This is another Tamiya 1700th scale model. That was a lot of entries for one person. Very productive. KSI Agent Texas submitted this F-84 Thunderjet jet fighter. I like the name Thunderjet. It sounds very thundery. This one is a lot less shiny than the previous F-84, but it still looks pretty cool. This model is in 172nd scale by Hobby Boss. KSI Agent also submitted this, well, Top Bunk has labelled it as an F-84 as well, and I don't think that's quite right, because it looks way different. My jet identification skills are quite poor, but I think this might be a Phantom. Not really sure, but it looks very nice. I've no idea what scale or manufacturer this is. Clara Voroshilov entered this T-62, which is said to be from Cuba in the 1970s. This is very nicely painted. 
very clean and neat looking. I rather like the discreet log at the rear of the hull. Maybe they're trying to hide the Soviet origins of this tank. Nah, probably not. Very nicely done. The model is in 135th scale from Tamiya. Monol submitted another Soviet tank, this time a T-64. This one's a little bit more dirty and looks like it's seen some fighting. It's also significantly smaller, being 15mm scale from Battlefront. Very cool. Up next we have Fire Fury 13's submission, which is an IS-3M used by the Egyptian army in the mid-1960s. Personally, I think the IS-3 looks quite interesting in the sand colours. You normally see them in green, so it's nice and different, and it's been very well painted too. The model is from Trumpeter and it's in 172nd scale. Panzer Dankwagen 420 Ausführung 69, which is a great name, though I think it has been changed now, has submitted this Type 59. I don't see any logs on it. I mean, that's okay though, because it's not a Soviet tank. It is very nicely painted and slightly dirty. Very nice. This model is in 172nd scale by Trumpeter. Rysieb or Rysieb submitted this Polish armoured squadron from the 1980s. There's a whole swarm of nice looking vehicles here. They've been hand numbered too. Very nice. These are in 15mm scale and are from Battlefront and the Plastic Soldier Company, though I couldn't tell you which came from where. Rysieb also submitted some Americans. An M60 and M1A1 Abrams platoon. These also have hand painted markings, including some slogans. I like Soviet Smasher. Nicely done. These are, like the previous set, 15mm scale models from Battlefront and the Plastic Soldier Company. Dreadnought Luna submitted this M48 pattern from the Vietnam War. This is a nice looking tank. It also has what appear to be hand painted slogans all over it. I think the one that just says SHORT on the turret is kind of funny. Nicely done. This model is a 135th scale kit from Monogram. Dreadnought Luna also shared this F-82 twin Mustang from the 1950s. This is a very odd looking plane, in a very interesting way. Kind of reminiscent of the Lockheed Lightning. I rather like it, both the model and the plane itself. Very cool. The kit is a Hasegawa 172nd scale model. Armored Jerboa submitted this Warrior Infantry Fighting Vehicle, which I guess is a bit like a British version of the Bradley, though obviously it's different. This has been done very nicely. I think the round things on the sides of the plate look pretty interesting, though I have no idea what they're for. The model is by Trumpeter. Lots of Trumpeter kits in this group build, and it's in 172nd scale. Max Strike Eagle entered this Vietnam War era Sheridan. This is a very nicely done little tank. Some of you will have seen this one on Ask a Herpaderp a while ago. The shielding around the MG is pretty interesting, and I rather like the mud on it. Great work. The kit is a 135th scale Tamiya offering. Ratto submitted this FA-18C fighter jet. Ratto did start the group build from its very beginning trying to get this kit complete, but the poor quality of the fit meant that he spent weeks trying to correct them and couldn't complete it in time. However, he still wishes to enter it, which Top Bunk has allowed due to the context he's provided. I'm also fine with allowing it, though I don't run the group build. Fit issues are a pain and it looks like Ratto put some good effort into this. The kit is in 148th scale from Ravel. I Need Help's entry was also not fully complete, though more complete than Ratto's, to the point where Top Bunk notes that it looks pretty much complete to him, and me, but then I'm not a plainsman so I can't really tell for sure. And I think I Need Help is a bit of a perfectionist. That's okay. It's up to him to decide when his model is complete. This is an F-14A VF-2 fighter jet, ostensibly named Bounty Hunters. I think it looks really good. This is a 148th scale Tamiya kit. The Chieftain submitted this Challenger 1. It's very nicely done and looks ready to challenge any enemies it can find. See what I did there? Huh? Nicely done. I mean nicely done Chieftain, not me for my bad jokes. This model is in 172nd scale by Ravel. And now for a few entries by Atlas Animations. First, this M48 pattern. This is a nice looking big green monster. I think the pattern is a pretty interesting looking tank. It looks like at some point the turret mount has been broken. 
Fortunately, Atlas Animations was able to get creative with a toothpick and fix it. Very nice. This is a 135th scale kit by Monogram. Atlas also submitted this cute little walker bulldog. I wonder if little tanks get offended when we call them cute. Of course they don't. They're inanimate objects. Or are they? This model looks very nice. It's a Tamiya kit in 135th scale. Atlas's third submission is this model of the USS Kitty Hawk. I was kind of amused that Top Bunk put aircraft carrier in brackets in the notes, just in case it wasn't obvious. In one of the pictures you can see that all the different kinds of planes on the deck have been labelled. It's a very full deck, and a very nice looking model. As the little plaque says, this is a 1 800th scale model, and if the box in the background doesn't give it away, it's from Academy. Very nice. And that's it. This is all of the submissions Top Bunk could find. He does suspect that there may have been a 15mm Chieftain Platoon, but couldn't find it. That's okay. I very much appreciate the work you go to in collecting these images, Top Bunk, and I know it can be kind of time consuming. Gathering up a few pictures doesn't sound like a lot, but it certainly does add up. So let's all say a big thank you to Top Bunk Productions. Big thank you. Let's now talk about the group build which is currently running on the Discord server. Obviously in the group build section. I know it doesn't make much sense, but just go with me on this journey. The group build has been running for a couple of weeks now, but you do still have plenty of time to start your build. It ends on the 6th of June, so at this point you still have over a month. The end date of June 6th may give you some hint as to the theme, but I'll tell you anyway. The theme is D-Day. Because this year is the 75th anniversary of the D-Day landings, it seemed to make sense. To quote the text Top Bunk has written, Any vehicle, unit, weapon, defence, and famous individuals to have participated or otherwise been involved in this event can be entered. The allowed time frame ranges from late 1943, the beginnings of preparations and of Operation Bodyguard, to the 8th of June 1944, D-Day Plus 2. A suitable enough immediate aftermath. Any entries depicting battles and other events that happened around the same time as D-Day but otherwise had little to no relation will not count. For example, an entry depicting the failed Soviet Jassy Kisinev offensive in Romania or the sinking of the Japanese destroyer Minazuki would not count. Entries can be of any scale. No what if or alternate history entries will be counted. This is strictly a historical build. Dioramas are optional. You can find the full text in the pinned messages on the group build channel at the top. It should answer most questions. If you do have further questions, feel free to ask in the channel. I have chosen to partake in this group build too. I'm going to be building this landing craft. I've been streaming the build on Twitch, and I'm hoping to complete it on Sunday. That is obviously the Sunday following the upload of this video. If you are watching this in the future, you've probably already missed it. There is no prize associated with this group build, and it is certainly not intended as a competition. It's just for fun, and it can serve as a nice opportunity for people to build something outside of their comfort zone. Or right inside of it, depending on where your comfort zone is. I think it's a nice community activity, so I hope everybody has fun with it. I look forward to seeing, and am currently enjoying seeing, progress pictures. I hope to see you in the Discord, there's a link in the description if you're not already on the server, and you can find the group build channel in the modelling and war games section. Also don't forget to subscribe, follow, ring the bell, and all the other things you do on YouTube and social media things. Links to all of the things including my Patreon and Twitch channel are in the description below. And as always, I shall return soon, so until then, be excellent to each other and thanks for watching. Farewell.